continuing our series of interesting cases. Here is the case of pseudo exfoliation with partial subluxation and a floppy iris operated by one of my colleagues eight days ago. And while putting the CTR, and since the capsule rexis was very small, my colleague lost the CTR somewhere in the superior nasal part in the sulcus. So we decided to wait for a few days before the cornea, which was hazy on that day, to clear up so that on a second day we could do something and manage this case. So we start by separating the anterior and posterior capsule which over a period of week have started sticking to one another and we would need this space to put in the IOL in case we have to put it in the bag and there is no way we could have put the IOL in the sulcus because the sulcus was compromised it was a case of pseudo exfoliation and subluxation so we have no option but to put the IOL in the bag and also in case we want to put the CTR again in the bag we would need to separate this area. So I am trying to explore the area where the diagram has been drawn by my colleague where he thinks he lost the CTR ringlet. So I use viscoelastic and I use a Y-shaped blunt rotator to push the iris so that I am able to visualize any uh, trace of the ringlet of the CTR. I am able to visualize it at an, at an angle. I make sure that the anterior and posterior capsule are totally separated because it has been some time now and if there is any adhesion which is formed between the anterior and posterior capsule right now, putting in the IOL or pushing the IOL in the bag would further aggravate the situation of subluxation if I don't separate this space right now before I proceed with the surgery. So I keep instilling viscoelastic and making sure that as far as possible, I am able to separate the adhesion between the anterior and posterior capsule. Now in such situations, I have to be very careful because the cornea is already decompensated. I have a floppy iris, a subluxated cataract with very, very weak zonules and a CTR stuck up somewhere half in the bag and half outside the capsular bag in the sulcus. So I finally located the CTR. One good thing my junior did was he drew a diagram where he thought that the CTR was lost. So I go in with a Lester's manipulated, a blunt round bodied instrument, go and hook my CTR from one edge and bring it into the visible area. With my left hand, I support it underneath and try and bring it over the iris, making sure that as the CTR slips over my left hand instrument, it slips into the angle and not back into the sulcus. So my left instrument is supporting the CTR from slipping back in while the right one is hooking it and bringing it up. Having done that, now I instill more viscoelastic inside and I plan the next move. I plan to use two micro forceps, one forceps which I use regularly for my B-hex expander because it has got crocodile teeth and will not let go of the CTR once it's hold. And in my left hand, I have another forceps, a micro 23 gauge forceps used by my retina colleagues for ILM peeling. So I keep my left hand ready just in case I feel my CTR is slipping. And with the crocodile tooth forceps, I try and thread CDR back into the bag with one movement. So I am able to dislodge it from the sulcus and reposition nearly 3 by 4 of CTR. But then I feel if I'm losing grip, so I would rather leave it, leave it back into the angle and re-grasp it and get a repurchase on it after putting some viscoelastic and distending the anterior chamber again. I have to be very careful of doing this procedure because in this area, I can cause a Desmond's detachment at the angle, also end up doing iridodialysis. So I now use a hook instrument again to engage the ringlet and slowly dial the CTR back into the bag. Now since this is a blind procedure, I am unable to unhook my instrument easily. So I tilt my hook rounded blunt instrument and make sure that the CTR ring is totally now within the bag. Now having completed one big situation, I proceed for implantation of the IOL in the bag. 
So I cut the suture which was given in the earlier time, removed the suture and I am ready to instill the IOL in the bag. Now mind you, again, IOL insertion in this situation is going to be very tricky because I have a very small capsular axis and over that it has shrunk over a period of time, over a week and I will have to instill or implant my IOL very carefully into the bag because I already have a very weak zonules with subluxation and any pressure of dialing within the bag will further aggravate the situation and I may lose the whole bag CTR complex into the vitreous. So instilling viscoelastic in the anterior chamber, I very carefully ensure that the leading loop of my hydrophilic lens land in the bag and having done so without exerting much pressure in the posterior direction, I slowly nudge and dial the trailing haptic into the capsular bag through negotiating through a very very small capsular hex. And then I will see as you will see that since the capsular hex is small, the trailing loop had a lot of difficulty getting into the bag. Now having done that, now I am practically out of the situation but now I need to make sure that I make relaxing incisions on the capsular excess margin because I already mentioned this was a case of pseudo exfoliation and these cases are very prone to capsular phimosis and would lead to further zonular breakdown if I don't enlarge my capsular excess edge. So I use a 26 gauge bent cannula to create small nicks in the anterior capsule but while doing this, we have to be very careful lest we scratch the interior surface of the IOL. We will try and create as many nicks in the interior capsule, but you will notice any amount of force in the capsule makes the bag totally collapse inwards, which shows that the zonules were very weak in this case. That is when my associate tried to put in a CTR, but ended up releasing the CTR into the sulcus because it was a floppy iris and there was a very small non-dilating pupil and he lost the CTR behind the iris and left the case for me to take over after a few days. I think which was the best choice in that situation. In a situation of an agitated, irritated iris, small pupil, corneal edema, it's a good idea to leave the case for that day and live another day to manage it. So I use Vana's forceps to create more larger nicks into the anterior capsule so that my capsule rexus margin is a little bit relaxed now. Now you will notice that the floppy iris is now giving problems to the surgeon. Now rather than going in with an irrigation aspiration to remove the viscoelastic, because I am already aware that the zonules are very weak, so if I go in with irrigation aspiration, either bimanual or coaxial, I'll be creating a lot of upthrust pressure in the anterior chamber and I might subluxate more of zonules. So I removed the viscoelastic using a slow burst of BSS in the anterior chamber without creating much pressure in the anterior chamber so as to not disturb the zonules and have the BSS percolate into the posterior chamber. I put in air into the chamber, close the case and the case is over. Now I have the IOL in the bag, the CTR has stabilized my capsular bag and the case is done beautifully. This patient was doing 6 by 12 after 10 days of surgery. Thank you.